Welcome everybody to the Tuesday, October 17th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Um, call the meeting to order. Uh, I will note that this meeting is being recorded live um, on FCAT YouTube and also on our Zoom Access Town website. Um, and once again, ask to, to introduce everybody in the select board. Er, to my right is Erica Goldman. To her right, Chris Waldo, and I am Philip Cantor. To my left is Veronica Blanchard and Adam Reed. Um, first item on the agenda is the voting to approve the minutes. We have a request to postpone the approval of the minutes for a couple of weeks. Next, the, um, or for a week. Next, the. Um, the warrants, we have four warrants. I note in the packet, one of them was reproduced, so that so five warrant packages, but one of them is the same duplicate. It's the one the one for $31,000 showed up twice. That packet showed up twice. I, just, oh. I looked through it, it was, it was there twice. Is that your deduction warrant? That was the deduction yeah. warrant, and that was probably the one that I reprinted because I couldn't find the signature page. That's all. All right, yeah. I found it twice, so. Oh, you found yeah, it yeah, twice, yeah, yeah. okay, um, all right. So um, there's four warrants, the accounts payable warrant, the amount of $130,219.19, the payroll warrant, the amount of $133,220.41, payroll deduction warrant, the amount of $31,976.81, um, and then a supplemental de uh, deduction warrant, the amount of $200. It's, it's so boring, it's not worth explaining. Um, <laughs> Those look good to me. Um, I move to approve the warrants. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, aye. Yeah, yeah sorry. It's unanimous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meetings attended by select board members. Chris. It's been so long, I do not remember. Okay. I did the, uh, again, I did the security, IT security club courses and completed Ooh. those. Oh, good for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Erica? Um, I was at the uh, the Woodbank. Yes. Um, oh. Yes. Yeah. That was it. The, the Woodbank presentation from the University of Maine and UMass. Which yeah. was really interesting. Same. And also a Frontier School Committee. And uh, we had a couple. We had a meeting with the lawyer, Ronique and I. And um, yeah, many other meetings. Too numerous to mention. Too boring to recount. Um, Public comments, anybody, before we get started. Um, unfinished business, we can hold off on that since there's people here with business to attend to. Um, new business, uh, Jan, you wanna go first? Yeah, sure. So Jan, yeah. Warner, Jan Warner here, Parks and Recreation to discuss placement of new, not old, new pickleball courts yeah. for Conway. So I previously came to you asking uh, to use some space on the South River Meadow, and we had been following that route for quite some time, met with uh, Conservation Commission, Community Preservation Commission, and it's, it's been a little bit of a difficult process because there are some, well, first of all, that meadow is just beloved to some folks around it, and they just don't want to see it used for anything but open space. So they've made themselves heard pretty loud and clear. And there are only a few of them, so um, we're, we're kind of just temporarily letting go of this idea, and maybe we might come back to it. We'll see what you think. But um, at, so there was a, a wetlands concern over there where we were going to reroute the parking lot and entrance to the parking lot. There was question whether um, the wetlands came within the 200 foot buffer zone. So we were gonna have to do some wetlands delineation, which would cost a couple thousand dollars. And so we decided to uh, put it on hold for a minute and look into some new space. So Ron Sweet, oh, I'm sorry. I should have started by introducing who's here with me tonight. So um, Julie Sweet is a Park and Rec member. Ron, you know well. And Paulette Lovecheck is working on our pickleball project with us. So sorry, I, I forgot that. Um, so anyway, Ron uh, and I put our heads together, and Ron said that he would be willing to reluctantly <laughs> part with some space over behind the grammar school 
it's space that um, he says the select board had previously allowed him to use. So um, he had some plans for it, but feels that he could fit us in, and that, that's why he's here tonight to confirm that that's actually how he feels, because I wouldn't want to misquote anybody. Um, so the land we're looking at, I gave you a map. It's um, behind the grammar school. There's um, three sort of open lots back there, uh, 8.2 and 8.3. Uh, uh, I believe uh, belong to the town. Does the one to the right of 8.3 belong to the town now? To the right, no. Yeah. So no, okay. But so we're proposing to use 8.3 and I drew in a little square on here. It's a very, very rough estimate of how we might arrange it. So the big rectangle would be the courts and the smaller L-shaped thing, a parking lot. So we thought it would be important to um, have a parking lot so that we don't have to use the grammar school air uh, parking lot, which is heavy black right there. So, um, you know, we're, we're here to ask you first if we can, if you think that that might be an appropriate use of that land. And we also uh, want to report to you that Julie has spoken with um, the Conway Grammar School principal. Because of the location, the best entry point there would be coming through the grammar school parking lot and around to the back. And you, you can... Go ahead and tell okay. us what she said. So um, I did talk to Kristen about it and um, asked how she felt about pickleball courts being behind the school. Um, and I told her, you know, behind the back parking lot and beyond the stone wall. And she was, she was totally fine with it. And I'm like, uh, you know, people would be driving through. She goes, yep, it's, so, it's okay. It's totally okay. So we got okay. <laughs> yeah, so we would... Um, before we get your response, obviously, we would, if you gave us permission to use that land, be, of course, willing to have conversations with the grammar school and how it might best work. In other words, if it doesn't work during pickup drop-off times, we might never schedule any events during that time. Um, I don't think it's close enough for noise to ever be an issue, but if there were ever quiet times needed, we could, of course, negotiate quiet times. And um, just like the, the last court, there's no proposal of lights or anything. It would be strictly daytime use. And um, am I leaving anything out? Ron, do you want to talk about it? No. No? <laughs> no, it's... it's land that is valuable to the town I like but I also see the need to, for the pickleball courts what they're generating in every other town around and to think that Conway may be left out if we don't find a place for them to play um, I think is a huge mistake and that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to work with them to so they can end up with a place somewhere. I mean, I thought South Meadow was a perfect place for them. There's a few residents that think differently. And I don't know if I did. What, uh, what just, would the highway department use it for otherwise? I mean, because you're not using storage. it now, right? We, we use stuff. it for storage. So, stuff. Okay, all right, stuff. Stuff, <laughs> lots of stuff. So where? So there's stuff on there now? There's trees and, you know, uh, wood. Um, right, okay, but not brush and like stuff you're like. not storing equipment there currently. It's, no, it'd okay. be more for materials and um, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Speaking of wood, and we'll be talking about the wood bank later, but my idea was to have the wood bank back in that area. Do you think there's enough room in lot 8.2? Well, uh, that's one of the things that I've been kind of thinking that we were going to have to do something with wood so yes I think we'd be still okay um number seven there is a resident is that right yes. lot seven yes that's Mary that's Quinta. down over the hill oh that is that's way down over the hill okay unfortunately the map is not topographically um, accurate okay. no not <laughs> scale wise no right. it's not even yeah. close so I have um engaged with a a guy who does site plans and 
Um, he thinks, I haven't even shared this yet, I just spoke with him today, but he thinks he can do that um, for under $2,000, which is in our budget, so he could present a schematic and a better idea of what it's going to look like mm -hmm. on the space. I mean, I personally think it's a better space than the South River. I was a little apprehensive on South River just because it is a more scenic um, space that people like walking and taking their dogs. I don't know if they like hearing bink, bink the whole time. <laughs> so I do think this is a, a better proposal. Um, my only concern, like I said, is if, if we have space for the wood bank and then, of course, hours of operations based on safety of the school and um, as you said, uh, dropping off and picking mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, um, a, sort of a, a natural thing for, for us not to play at that time or come in and out at that time. Our pickup games are generally after work for five o'clock, so that shouldn't interfere with the three o'clock pickup time. Mm -hmm. And um, in, the, in the summertime, we do play during the day, but school's out of session, so. So you said you don't want our town to be left out. Are there like events? I, I don't. I'm, yeah. I don't know much about. So it's, it's coming about in every town, mm -hmm. and we all have Facebook groups, and we're interacting with each and every town. We all go play in other towns. They come here, and it's a really nice community um, socializing event. And I've met so many people, mm -hmm. and everybody says the same thing. It's just a really good social community building event. And um, so, as you know, the, the town helped fund the Deerfield uh, mm -hmm. courts, and those are pretty active. There's some courts in Greenfield, Sunderland's thinking of some, Hatfield is in the process of building some, and it just, it gives everybody a lot of options to go different places. And we have currently 163 members on our Facebook page, and we have 80 players who have engaged in our sign-up teams. <coughs> and of those 80 in our sign-up, those who have actually played in Conway, about, uh, I'd say about 80% of them are Conway residents. But we do have, you know, coming and going people from other towns as well. While Deerfield was down, we had a lot more people from Deerfield coming up. We also have um, a good age spread too. I mean, it's Very not good just age spread. We age. have kids from high school, uh, and and you know it's a really nice idea behind the grammar school. They might actually be able to use that as part of their uh, phys ed curriculum. Um, with this we have people from high school all the way up to I don't know how old our eight, our oldest one is probably close to eighty. Yeah. Um, um, one one resident's over eighty, I think. Where's the trail that the kids take? Yeah, the... so if you look at the, um, Ron can show you better. It's not a, right oh, okay, so it's no If okay. you look at the satellite picture, you can see that dark circle under 8.2, that's, uh -huh. that's where it is. Got it. Oh, sorry, just under E, that's where it is. Oh, okay. Right, Ron? Right there under E. Yeah. And you think this is far enough from Mary's house that noise isn't gonna be an issue? Have you, um, I, have I, you ever stood by pickleball and listened to it? I have. I'm only on the yeah. TV. It's not very loud. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it really we isn't. Don't, no, we yeah. don't hear it from our house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you're, there's. It's hitting the news a lot, and people are complaining about some noise. But I think it's much smaller residential areas um, with buildings that the sounds bouncing it's off of and everything. And. We're not playing 24-7, so you know we've, we've seen some letters that people say, you know, 24-7, I'm going to lose my mind. We're not playing that often here. No, uh, like Chris Everett grunts. <laughs> 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 it does make a little tinging sound, and I can't promise you that Mary McClintock down there won't hear it, um, but I think it'll be far enough in the distance that it really won't be disturbing and infrequent enough that it shouldn't ruin her life, mm -hmm. but I can't speak for her. So, I, you know, uh, the one thing I did want to say is that this, the, that property behind the school had a lot of potential good uses, and um, a, a lot of us wanted to see, for instance, something like senior housing go up there. Um, but we, it, you can't build there. It's, it's been perked. It's all ledge. You, there's, you can't do a lot of things that you would want to do there. So that. Although the land is very valuable, it's not 
Use can't be them. used for the things that to me would it would potentially have the highest and best uses for. Um, uh, that being said, the, the and I'm not the nervous hand wringing type, but um, the kids coming in and out of that school for pickup in at three in the afternoon, two two thirty in the afternoon. That that to me strikes me as the a potential as the potential for unwanted interactions with automobiles traveling, um, mm -hmm. and I, I mean I, get, I I'm, I'm sure Kristen you know this was something that Kristen thought about too or whatever and I'm but we don't but, have any issues as far as the highway department with trucks and I mean we have to deal with the like, parks down there and we get materials delivered all times of the day and. I've had no right, issues. but we did we did create a whole drive a whole separate driveway back th so that you know the the big trucks don't go right through the middle of the have you children. Seen where the people but the cars park? are using what the big trucks I know, are supposed to use. I know, <laughs> I know, but I don't believe the pickleball would cause any kind of an issue for it. Yeah, so I mean, you might estimate that and I'm throwing a wild guess out there, but there may be. 40 or 50 pickup parents that come in and out on a daily basis, and you'd be talking about four to six extra cars if they were to come in and out during pickup time, which is unlikely. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, the in increased risk of children being injured would be low, but it would be an increased risk. Mm -hmm. But it could be eliminated by making sure the times were available. Right, which we did talk about. Yeah, is there a way to limit, like I mean, during this time, the courts are closed? Yeah, the traffic was I'd feel close. better about that for sure <laughs> if that was a limitation. Um, the parking lot, uh, what's the proposal for how that's going to be built? So, again, I have to meet with the the guy who might help us lay it out better. I don't really have a layout idea, but we do want enough for 20 cars, and we would like it to be just ground. Just ground, okay. Because right now, like, right now that goes for about 10 feet or so, and there's the emergency management shed to the left, and then there's a highway shed as well um, right there, but that's already on a, sort of an elevated platform. So is the thinking to keep the, no. Keep that level or go down to the grade of the. Right. Yeah, and the so. Ball, where the courts would go, it may look level right now, but it's a long way from being level. <laughs> um, so that would all have to be leveled out. And then once that level gets figured out, that's where you would figure your parking lot. It'd probably be a walk down to the court. Even at that, but it so and then would there be so would you need to remove the cluster of trees that are standing in the middle of that field? Yes. Yes. So not in the middle, to the to the so right. Yeah, I guess no, the they're going to come out anyways because I. In order for things to happen down there, I need to take the trees out so we can make more space for us. So we don't have any uh, real figures for you in cost estimate. Our last estimate was about 115,000, and you know that was based on that site. Uh, can't imagine it would be any more than that, but we don't have those numbers yet until we figure out the actual site plan. And were you thinking of doing this? I mean, see, see, you know, town meeting is December 9th. We're, we're I don't be, think we can fit it in, and I'm on vacation starting okay. September 9th, not December 9th. So I think I think we're yeah. out of luck for this special town meeting. We have to wait for annual. But that would be the plan to get CPA funding for that. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's the funny a town like this. There's no everything has trade-offs, and there's always going to be someone. That would prefer to keep it the way it is. Um, that's just the nature. There's no such thing as municipal unanimity anymore, um, in my opinion. But uh, 
the pick, pickleballers are everywhere. I got I, I, I'll, I'll say that. I don't understand why every time. Every time I get on Facebook, I'm asked to join the pickleball Facebook group. Maybe you should. <laughs> Maybe you should go play. <laughs> Uh, it just automatically asks me or, or it suggests to me that I should join. I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um. well, I, I just wanted to reiterate that perhaps, you know, since they would be close to the school for the upper grades, you know, I don't know whether the uh, PE program might incorporate some of that play in there, but even in after school, you know, they have a one day when they have the running program. I don't know whether that's possible to have one day at pickleball for the older fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, you know, might be a, a nice thing that would be right there for them as well. But I do know, you know, we you do have to share all the courts wherever they are, which is, which is worked out. But, yes. you know, there have been times when we've come to play during the pickleball time, and there have been some, some young people who are playing basketball, mm -hmm. and we've included them in, but, you know, it would be nice if they had their basketball court and didn't have to leave when we came to to set up. Yeah. I, I just from having been there so much, so often through the years, and that back entrance has its own sort of culture. There's like a pick, the back entrance, there's like groups of parents that just sort of use that. And a lot of them are the out of time program. Mm -hmm. or, um, so I guess some of the wings parents use that as well. Um, but I've, I've always thought there's very few actual parking spots back there. And there's sort of a culture of parents that have been sort of lining their cars up again against that what would now be the opening for briefly for a minute or two as they go in and do a pickup. It's never been blocked. Never been blocked when but you I've needed seen, it. Seen, uh, entrance is nothing. Yeah, Julia, I don't think that's a yeah, pickup and I don't, area I don't now feel anymore. Like it would that, be, yeah, I don't think it is anymore. Yeah, it's just a couple vacant lots and that's it. Mm -hmm. Parents aren't going back there anymore. And again, we would be trying to avoid that time anyway. Yeah. Yeah. My knowledge is dated, sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it used to. We used to, yeah. All right. Any, anybody have any other questions or concerns? I mean, I think it's the mo, mo, uh, opposition to the, to the field. To the south to the meadow was growing and there was i believe it's on the agenda for the council of aging in their meeting next week <laughs> to officially oppose it some, some um, wild rumors were thrown out there i had yeah. one of the members on council on aging come back to me and say she heard we we're building a million dollar <laughs> yeah, that, that's beautiful that's that's so conway right there that is yeah. that that is so conway right there all that all that money we have yeah, so I can understand why they're talking about it. But uh, we've actually had members from the Council on Aging play with us. Yes. So they're enjoying it too. Yeah. But I. But yeah, that site is an issue for some people. Um, and I, for, for sure, it's going to be an issue for less people. You know, the only concern is the interactions with the school that people, yeah. parents. Kids might have. Yeah, I think it's generally an over an easier spot to to use. I mean, we won't have the wetlands concerns there. We don't have the um, endangered species concerns there. Those were some pretty big hurdles that we were going to have to get over that we hadn't even started. So we were starting to have to, you know, buck up some money and say, well, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> maybe this isn't the route to go. You know, thanks. Thank, I, I think it's a good move to consider alternatives. I do. It's, um, it's, I think so I guess tonight I'd be looking for your blessing to go forward and ask Park and Rec to uh, spend some money on a site design and get an estimate and meet with the um, Community Preservation Committee and, and move forward on it. And I want to be able to say that I have approval from the select board to use this space. Yeah, I mean, based on based on the principal having given her blessing, um, that's that's definitely huge for me. And um, I mean, I would say yeah. I would also say I don't know. I mean, the the site 
the site plan. I, I don't know how. Uh, I don't know how necessary, necessarily specific it really has to be for well, for, for I think, the CPC. I think it needs to paint a good picture for okay. residents to want to want to do it. If I just come at you with something like this, I don't think it does much for anybody. So, um, I think I think the site map will be fairly decent. That's worth it's worth the investment. We don't have to pay engineers or anything because Ron's going to do all of it um, himself, and so that will still save us a ton of money. But this um, plan will be just a small investment for the perception of the project, and that's going to come out of your existing budget. Yes, mm -hmm. with parking rec approval. So this is just a vote to a vote to carry on and move mm -hmm. and maintain forward momentum. Um, so I mean, I I'll move to encourage the Parks and Rec to carry on with this proposal. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. So. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank, thank you for Ron. I mean, the guy works like seven days a week I already. Yeah. Now on his one day off, he's going to be doing this. Um, eight days but, a week. Yeah, eight days a week. So, but if you could, Ron, if you could stick around for the discussion on the bridge and the wood and the wood okay. tank as well. So glad you're here. Glad you popped in. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Nice to see you. Um, uh, what else? A um, couple of quick appointments. Denise Dwelly to the Historical Commission. Denise is awesome. Um, term ending June 30th, 2026. Um, I'll move to do that to approve her. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, Liv Wyatt to the Sustainability Committee for term ending June 30th, 2026. She is an architect. She's also like, really awesome, and they're lucky to have her. Um, second? Did second you? Yeah, okay. uh, motion to second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Those two approved. Vote to open the warrant and set the closing date for, well, let's, since Ron's here, let's just go to the stuff that Ron's here for, okay? Yeah. Um, Bardwell's Ferry Bridge. So, since he's here, if, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about a letter that we're writing to MassDOT, Ron. Mm -hmm. And it talks about um, the, the, the specific thing that I... Let me read you this sentence. Conway's Highway Superintendent Ron Sweet has gotten an estimate from Gill Engineering for repairs to the bridge, which are estimated at three hundred and seventy-four thousand, not including engineering costs. So that's 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 really all that we talk about in terms of the cost. A letter like this, to me, what I'd like to do is really highlight the costs and not underplay the costs. Okay. So, so the, the the estimate is a real rough estimate. I was asked by Mass DOT bridge uh, mark developer that it'd probably be a good idea if we understood where we were looking at for money. And that's why I reached out to Gill Engineering um, to give us a really rough estimate. That's all they can do because there's no engineering done. All they did was took from the report of the beams that were bad and that's what they base their estimate off of. I don't know, I haven't seen the final report. So I, there, there could be more things, but that was the biggest thing in the report that shut the bridge down. Yeah, that, so all he did was take current pricing and they actually changed what the beams were because he said that the beams were wrong beams that were in there. They weren't, they're not meant to be in a, the ones that fail aren't meant to be in a wet situation. 
So that's what that estimate is. It's a really rough estimate replacing what the bad part of the bridge is without knowing any more about the it, it, report. It talked a lot, that, that their preliminary report talked a lot about other items that could really increase the cost, and, but that this, they didn't know, um, like the decking. Well, the, there is some decking included in this. It's everything on our section of the, the approach. We talked about how the, the, they felt that a lot of the decking is no longer attached the, the wood beam were no longer attached and it needs to be all re whatever. We're done because with the, the beams, the, a lot of the stuff that the flooring is attached to is to them beams and there's nothing left there. So basically that whole section's got to be rebuilt from what I, from what I could gather from the report. Right. And I think that that's what's in the report, but, I mean into the estimate, but I'm pretty sure that in order for this to even move forward, somebody's got to do an engineering of how to fix it. All they did was take from the plans, from the, ori the original plans when they redid the bridge and just replaced, it's just replacement stuff. So they, they basically just priced out materials, right? Yes. There's not, this is not even like labor to yeah, I think there's labor included in there. Um, like demolition, is that? Materials inspection. Yeah, I didn't see, I mean, nothing that said labor to me. Oh, they did, it appears it's not. Uh, it, it's kind of complicated reading this. Um, but it was just a ballpark, just yeah. so that we had some I idea where we're, uh, this is a, a bare minimum. I mean, this ain't even a bare minimum. This is, this told me right away that there's no way that we're going to afford it. Uh, so it could have been a dollar seventy four, and there's no way we could have afforded it. I mean, yeah, it's not necessarily <laughs> true, but, but I mean, would the expectation be though that we would split this cost with Shelburne? I don't believe this is Shelburne's. Okay. Concern. This is it just, is their concern. They're concerned about the bridge, but it's our, resp it's, it's our it's responsibility. Our, it's our responsibility. The bridge, our responsibility ends where the bridge starts. So it's the approach that failed. Yeah, it's only the approach. The rest so is owned by Shelburne, their parts of it. But so even back in the repair the approach. when the bridge got redone in 95, I mean, it was a joint effort between the two towns to get this done. Mm -hmm. And Shelburne's more than willing to, you know, help with, I, I mean, I don't know how financially, but as far as moving things along with Mass DOT to get this taken care of, they're, they're right behind us on this. It, it's as much of a hassle for them as it is our residents yeah. that it's not open. So cynical and down on the state right now. I just, um, see, let me let me really let me give just, you another. They just, they just not, it never works out for us. They'll they'll authorize a report and a study and say you're on your own, buddy. Well, we had good luck with our last bridge. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that that was the exception that proved the yeah, rule. I, temporary <laughs> bridge. No, they're moving forward. Yeah, they will. Yeah, they will. Yeah. Well, here, 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 has been nice. Here's something to think about. The bridge that I, we had engineers do to re, for the repair of the first bridge on North Poland, the engineer estimated the repair cost to be around $16,000. Well, it went out to bid. And it's 60, $65,000 or $68,000. I, I can't afford to take that out of my budget. So I put the thing on hold for now until we figure out. I've got so much other stuff going on. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else. You know, every time you turn around, the, the numbers are getting so wacky that. And the engineer, all he could say is, it's just such a small project that you can't. It, it, you can't just. He thought he had it figured out right. <laughs> I mean, what if we spend all this money 
to fix the Conway approach, but the rest of the bridge still has the wrong steel on the Shelburne approach. They don't have an approach. Okay, so so the steel that is from the R approach that spans the river and goes to the other side of Shelburne. No, that's it's different. It's a bridge from our approach to Shelburne side. There's not these beams are not used in okay. in the bridge. It's it, all we have is the approach. So it's we're just spanning. Our approach is so that you can get to the bridge. The beams are not in the bridge. Okay. I'm gonna have to go over and look at it. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I <coughs> there's a section of when you take the sharp corner, right? From there, it's still planked. It's still considered bridge. It's yeah. just a, oh, I see. So you're talking that span yes. that's not covered. Right. That that part okay. there is yeah. our approach. Okay, because you're saying bridge, so I'm just thinking the whole thing's a bridge. <laughs> you know. Okay. Got it. Thanks, Chris. And the um, Shelburne doesn't have that on their side. Mm -hmm. The bridge ends at that. Got it. Sorry. Uh, no. We're so fortunate. So many things, all right? Uh, you know, I, I don't think Gill Engineering did anything did, did really with this estimate. I, 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 I wish it would have been more accurate in terms of like it, it seems like for sure it's going to be a lot higher than 374000 for sure. Yeah, I mean, you got to figure, I mean, you put the engineering costs in there and... And I, uh, you know... We were figuring a minimum half a million. Right. Then we should say that in the letter then. I mean, can we use it as an example that that estimate for the other bridge went from like 16000 to sixty five or, you know, like... Does that make? I don't know if it's comparable, but I don't know. I'm not. I don't know how to. Everything that I've done in the last two years is money is just crazy. Yeah. Gone crazy. Just absolutely crazy. So I don't know. And the other, the other, you know, it's the other thing that not just the state inspection but the Gill engineering inspection what they stated really clearly is that the steel that was put in there was the wrong steel they used weathered steel right before and that's not the location to use it. right which is a design mistake by the state from the 1995 repair uh, I, don't, I don't know if I, uh, is that do we know that that was I mean, was that the state's responsibility, or was that the... Well, the, the, the state would have had to inspect that work back in the day. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They, they would have they had approved, the plans. They, they approved, approved it. Approved it. But nobody... And, I mean, I don't know if they, it was a fairly new product that they hadn't had any issues with at that point. And I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not going to go So was it Gill Engineering who told us that it was... The, who told us that it was the wrong kind of steel that was the, put in originally? The, the mass dot inspection that closed the bridge said that it was the wrong steel. The Gill Engineering report that we have in front of us said it was the wrong steel. Okay, so we know the town of Conway didn't put the wrong steel in there. Is that, let's put that in the letter. Um, <laughs> and that this is, this is a mass dot mistake and um, that it should, the letter to mass dot should. I think you should be very careful how you tread on Blaming, well, I mean, you're looking for help, right? And I, I, I know what you're saying, but also looking at it from you don't, we don't know what was back in '95 what they were approved to use. So right. we don't know if there was issues with them beams at that point. It may have something that's may have come from. 
them using it since. Right, so maybe in 95 it seemed fine and now they know better. Right, so to sit there and say that they used the wrong means, I think that that's not a no. way to go about this. I think when but we originally had the meeting, the thought was that each town would approach us by saying, we can't afford to fix this, could you please you know, and so this was, I think, thought of as an introductory letter to DOT right. saying basically, we need help. Well, one thing I'd agree on is this number is too low. Um, if it is just materials, doesn't include engineering, doesn't include labor costs, doesn't include cranes or temporary supports, I mean, it, I think it's going to go well above 500000 so that would be my only concern is if we're going to write this to the state saying this is the estimate cost. We can't present no, no, no. I, I, that was not the intent of mm -hmm. this. It was and the intent of this number was to give me an idea of right. what we were looking at. But okay. see, what we're trying to figure out is the language in the letter to Mass Dot to get them to undertake the repair, and that's why, to me, you know, it's. Well, I'm pretty sure that Mass Dot already knows that Conway can't afford, it. and we're under well, current hardship. Because that's what you would think. Storms. The state, you'd think the state would know that we can't afford three point four, you know, three point nine million in road repair too. But that didn't get them to say yes, they'll do something about it. So well, I, Mass DOT has been doing something about it. This is true. It. This is true. You're talking two two different levels of state. Yeah, this is true. And. To say that Mass DOT is not going to do something with this without at least putting a preliminary letter out to them, I think it's wrong to start throwing things around about you know how much this is going to cost and how much how much why this is a problem because so the beams that were used wrong in the beginning and blah blah blah. I think it's more of let's just put a request for help between Conway and Shelburne and see where that step takes us. So we can say something like this was a sudden unforeseen hardship. We're already buried, <laughs> buried with all the money and repair needed for the storm damage. This is the second bridge that was closed immediately within a year span. What if I were to change the language in there um, to make it more accurate to what Ron was saying to that the um, estimate from Gill Engineering is for materials only and does not include labor, construction, engineering? Yeah. With that. And is only a projection. Yeah, yeah. a preliminary. Yeah, and conservative. <laughs> and based yeah, upon conservative, that's a good word. <laughs> right. And based upon the cost of materials today, because you know, six months from now, this could be twenty five percent higher. Or more. Yeah. <laughs> we could double. And you know, this is this is twenty twenty three. The re the major repair that this is fixing was from nineteen ninety five. So this, the, the major repair that they did last time lasted 27 years. And um, I don't know what, I don't know how long it's supposed to last. My guess is longer than 27 years. I would not argue with that. And, um, but it's like the temporary bridge right now. There was a complaint about how high the waters were to the bridge. So if they could make a, take that into consideration on the new bridge, and basically Mass DOT said that, or the engineer said, we only design for 25 year floods. We don't design for anything more than that, so that's, if something happens, because of a greater flood than that, and you know, that's how they move forward with things. They can't just start changing things. I mean, I know climate change is becoming a pretty major thing for towns, and, but when they're controlling 
how they do, you know, engineer things. I mean, that's the whole point. They control that. I mean, it's we wouldn't be in this spot if they hadn't, if there was, if in the absence of either a design defect or an engineering defect or an inspection defect. Well, all, yeah, but all, it's, it's, all of which are the responsibility of the state. But as Ron said, I mean, like, who knows? Like, maybe in 1995, that was that was what that was standard. That was what they put in. Like, there wasn't a problem with that. So obviously, it must have been okay because mass out of people. Well, you gotta you gotta believe that they wouldn't be sticking things in there that knew that there was going to be issues with it. I mean, new stuff comes out all the time and typically go through a lot of inspections and we will, you know, all kinds of things and sometimes things just don't make it. I guess I'd be, I don't even know how you could find this out, but I'd be curious, like, what other bridges in the state are using this kind of steel that, that they never should have used in 95? Yeah, I mean, that, that would be a difficult thing stick somebody in the, their, their li they have library with all those plans. Yeah. But um, the practices are outdated. Yeah. A 25 year old year flood 25 years ago is a seasonal flood today. Right. Yeah. Well, at least this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And probably going forward. So shall I redraft yeah. Monday's meeting? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's all right. All right, Ugh. one disaster to the next. Um, uh, Woodbank. Yeah. yeah, Woodbank, because Ron's still here. Woodbank, yes. Um, so what got us interested in the Woodbank again, Ron, is there's a, a grant program, um, that uh, federal grant program, but for either $10,000 or $20,000 to get it started to buy all the equipment that basically buy the equipment from Wesco because they sell all that stuff, the chaps, the gloves, the chainsaw, splitter, that sort of thing. And um, so there's, the issue would be storage of that stuff and then where to put it. Um, and yeah, so uh, your, <laughs> your thoughts, please. <laughs> I, I mean, I think what, what we should do is add everything that we think we, we could use up to even a solar kiln. Right? Because if, if they're offering these funds, we should give everything that we think that we need to make this a really nice wood bag. So storage, splitters, chainsaws, solar panels. I think you first need to have a plan of how you're going to do, how it's going to be used. Mm -hmm. Who's using it? Because not knowing who's going to be using it, you can't really plan for how things are done. So is that you have specific people doing it? or you have We have a volunteer chairperson of the committee and, uh, uh, and uh, her son who, has, who works with trees and wood and is very competent in that regard. Um, and, and there'd be other, there's other people that have expressed an interest, but there's no formal committee yet. But I'm pretty confident that, you know, that. So the town that, needs to have it set up so that they can legally do what they need to do. That's. And go from that point, find out what the insurance company is going to require. Yeah, we know, we know that it's doable from that point of view as yeah. well. I know, but to set things up, you've got to know what the, what, the requirements are. I mean, there, there would be a requirement that the people on the committee sign waivers, um, hold harmless agreements, that sort of thing as well. And that anybody coming back there to do any work on it would have to sign something like that, um, that sort of thing. But uh, I mean, so at the at the presentation that we were all at, was that last week or the week before? Yeah, I can't remember. One of the um, weeks ago. Yeah, so the liability eligibility and distribution were a couple of were, were three of the things that they mentioned um, i think the, the first thing they said was like the location of the wood bank it's got to be flat it's got to have easy access and um 
got How to consider. How big of an area? Hmm? How big of an area they need? They, but that, I don't remember that they went into that, but they said mostly like ease of access, um, flat location, and then consider the noise of chainsaws or whatever processing equipment and whether that's going to affect, um, you know, neighboring abutting properties. I don't see that being an issue there. Um, it would be nice to know what you're thinking you need for area, especially before I, you get I thought too they far said on the call it didn't need to be that big. They said something like a quarter of an acre. I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah, that's what yeah. they said on the call, a quarter of an acre. Mm -hmm. And that if you, if you, in the course of a whole year, if you process five cords, that that's a good, that that's a good amount, like that's, which is you know, whatever, but that's, but, but it, um, and then there's whole, like, the decisions about who's going to get the wood and who has to pay for it and who gets it for free and how do they get it and all that, that sort of needs to get sorted out as well. But all those things can be dealt with and right, solved. Right. No, no, that's, that's not an issue with, from my standpoint. It's, I kind of needed to know what kind of area they were going to need size-wise. Um, and as far as all the equipment and stuff like that, you, Get a storage box, and they, everything can be tucked in there. Mm -hmm. They don't need power, right? No, no, you don't need power. No, no everything's gas, chainsaws, splitters, mm -hmm. which is a huge mistake. Electric's a lot better. Well, and and Oesco sells all that. That have they have electric splitter. They have all that electric chainsaws now. They have all that. Uh, I mean, but you can also it's battery power. Like you can also yeah. like all those things have. You can get a generator. Yeah. You can get a generator. I'm, I'm just saying because we've pretty much gone to everything battery powered except for the bigger stuff, and it's way better all the way around. But that would require an outlet or some place to recharge the batteries. And, and you need to mod Unfortunately, there's no power down there. Yeah. yeah. That's. Well, is that something that could potentially be included in a grant? Like we identify a spot and we decide that that's that we want power. Could we do so? Maybe maybe the pickleball court needs some pepper. <laughs> Won't give them any ideas. <laughs> well, there was talk about putting a roof over the pickleball with solar panels. <laughs> For the school, and the actually, you know, where, where they, they've been talking it? about solar for that field for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. um, and what, like, store the batteries in a shed? What's that? Store the batteries in a shed? Batteries for yeah, they the can't solar. Get cold. They you couldn't have them out there in the winter, though. You'd have to have yeah. them someplace where they don't freeze. So. Um, just yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Oh. All right. So I mean, that's yeah. So even if it's up to say it's double, if it's a half acre, there's still plenty over there, right? I mean that piece, that's what that's like two acres there. Yeah. Right? No, yeah. That two. lot is a four acre lot. The problem with the lot is the stupid right away that goes through it. Wait, I thought um, we were talking about the not where this. Yeah, eight point two. Eight point two. That's two acres, right? Yeah, eight point two. Eight point two. No, you can't use any part of that. Sorry. Okay. That, Cause that is the parking area uh -huh. for the trails. And then this area is the trails for the school. And then this is. So, let me see so are you talking about sharing part of 8.3 with the pickleball courts? I'm trying to see. Yeah, it's four acres space. It's four acres. Okay. Also mm -hmm. oh, behind the pickleball courts. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, right. that's plenty of space. That's at least two acres right there. Yeah, but I'm not, you got to understand, that's still land, the property that the highway uses. Um, right, and it looks empty. <laughs> I was just going to mess with you. It looks empty. There's nothing there. You see, it's been down there in a while. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff there. Yeah. Um, there are, I'm not saying there ain't room, but, you know, because this was all kind of, this will work. <coughs> Everything the way, um, not all, everything's gonna been messed up because of the storm. Yeah, I mean, I'll come over there. But if if the pickleball court moves forward and it has a parking lot, I mean that'd be a perfect spot 
to work off the wood bin. Yeah, yeah. the edge of a, the edge of a parking area. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So maybe it, we even propose to Jan that they just move this back a little bit and allow some space here. But I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But you think this this piece of I mean, in, in theory, this is big enough. It is big. To hold. There's a four, wood that's a four acre yeah. lot. It, to, it does get damp down near the bottom end of the thing. It, I mean, the property pretty much rolls down. Yeah. A lot of us have walked the dog, your dogs there, like once or twice, and pick up so many ticks there and that's about it you, you don't go back yeah i i don't see an issue with working with things you know make it work all right good it's what the people want and yeah then... it'll help people and also there's also going to be um at, at a special town meeting we're going to Voters are going to be asked whether they will adopt a senior property tax work-off program like every other town in the state already has. And one of the opportunities to volunteer would be at something like this. And I would imagine some some would choose to do that because mm -hmm. splitting wood can, there's a certain amount of enjoyment out of splitting wood. Where? Yeah, as long as you don't think, as long as you don't do too much of it, and as long as the weather's not too cold or too hot, yeah. Um, Each to their own. So, all right. Yeah, I don't, I don't have an issue. Good. We'll do whatever we can to make all right. work. Thank you, Ron. Okay. All right. So, will the select board be um, applying for the grant? Well, I was going to say, will the select board be appointing a working group to work on the grant to apply, or how is that? The grant be? was just like a, it was like one page. It was mm -hmm. we just like send it in. But if we get it, <laughs> right? I mean, do you want a yeah. group to actually talk about this or first before it and get their ducks in a row before it apply for the grant? Um, When's the deadline for the grant? Do we have? I mean, do we have enough time? To I, I don't know. I forget. All these things are done sooner rather than later, though. Yeah, I mean, we, we could certainly apply right away. But I was just thinking it'd be good to have a group of people who were going to spearhead it in place. That would be good. Maybe one person. And your son. That's two. Yeah. <laughs> Three counts, Phil. Yeah, I like the idea. I'm going to get him. And get a wood stove for me upstairs. Um, yeah, so I mean, we can get we can get a working group started. That would be a good thing. But we can also do we can do two things at the same time. Like get, work on the grant. I know I wanted to get the price list from Oesco of just a basic. There was there was a list in that information that that when the, the workshop we went to of just sort of like a things you might want to buy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And um don't forget to include a container box. What what? Don't forget to include a container box. Yeah. That's what it's put it off. That too. Do you know how much those run these days? The shipping container? I have no idea. It's probably like six, seven thousand dollars. My daughter's boyfriend got left a $500 on Craigslist, so. All right, put him to work. <laughs> I mean, this is out in New Mexico, but still. Uh, <laughs> uh. All right. Any other um, All right, thank you, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. The MassDOT Community Transit Grant Program. Is that this? Yes. Totally empty. Yes. So, um, the vehicle application grant opens in November. Um, and that's what, that's what I'd like to apply for. 
So we don't have a vehicle. That is correct. Right. So this would basically be a vehicle that the town owns? The town, we don't. So this is one of those things we have to apply for it in order to have the option of doing it. If we don't apply for it, we don't have that option. Okay. Um, but we have, right now, there we have no means of transporting seniors um, or handicapped. And uh, this is a grant program that pays 80% of the cost. The I did look at it. It is the downside to it is it requires a 20% cash match. I did speak to one resident who had in the who had in the past indicated a desire to have this service for this town and they indicated a possible interest in providing that cash match. Do we have an idea of how much that match would be? So if these are these are these are wheelchair accessible vehicles um, they're new. They're vans. They're hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand. If you're talking like a maybe like I was thinking eighty, but yeah, like something Probably in that. Yeah. So we need twenty thousand dollars. Right. Something of that nature. As our match. Okay. Just um, I do have the town administrator and um, does have a grant match amount that I've been adding to every year. It's not twenty thousand, but it might be able to get us part way there, mm -hmm. just so you are aware. So, and then there is another grant that there was a related grant program with the, that, with the, that's part of the community transit grant program for drivers, which is 50% of actual cost. And that, that is not a requirement for a cash match. It can be an income. There's more flexibility with the match, but that is, the vehicle would need a driver. That's all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> But again, if we don't if we don't apply for these things, we have no opportunity to provide this service. If we do apply for it, it doesn't mean we're going to do it. It just means we have that option to keep going. So, optionality is the way is the way to go. Um, and uh, so, this would presumably just be like a van that gets parked at the highway garage, or it's part of or our in I mean, front yeah or, somewhere. That's what I was going to say. We're going to need to know. Well, I'm going to have to look into also Maya insurance in terms of yeah. liability for drivers and where would we house it and all that kind of stuff. But if we apply for the grant, then that just we can, gives we us can the option about later if we get it. Right. So. <laughs> and you know, when, again, so one of the things that the the population so Conway the population of Conway is 1,700 and something. The population of residents over the age of 60 is 740. Like <laughs> the the Council of Aging budget has been one thousand two hundred dollars flat for like twelve years now. We don't. They don't get their fair share in this town. They don't. Um, Let's get them the van. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> that might it might. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's yeah. So. Uh, well, I don't see any downside to applying to that, basically. If it's, it, just, it keeps our options open. So, I mean, that's, that's basically what this is to do, is to uh, instruct the town administrator <laughs> on the select board's behalf that this is what we want to do, and um, let's do it. And, you know, we, we have been talking with the South County C. Jennifer Robillard, um, the South County Senior Center, and we may, we may or may not be working with them more in the future. Um, I can't, I can only, you can only bring a horse to water, you can't make the horse drink. Uh, <laughs> so it depends on whether our, yeah, um, depends on several factors, but I, I, I think that we'll be working with them more and more. If we, we have, there's 15 seniors that like get meals there from Conway that get meals there almost every day. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they just got some transportation services. They got a small grant to provide the towns that belong to that. But um, the future of these sorts of things is to combine services with your neighboring towns. 
and um, if, so if we have this service to offer, we could also provide it in, to neighboring towns and get funding for neighboring towns as well, potentially. So um, something else to think about. So I have been uh, so instructed. <laughs> all right. So do you, do you want a formal vote? Do you want no, a all right. Okay. Um, just so because. Yes. Yeah. So because so you got you got the instruction for the mass dot letter to, on the Barbells Ferry Bridge. You got the instruction on the mass dot transit grant program application mm -hmm. and the instruction on the firewood bank grant. Mm -hmm. So that's um, we've instructed you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, the. Vote, voting to open the warrant and set the closing date for the warrant for special town meeting. Veronique. Okay, so I think I emailed you all. Yes, you yes. did. Okay, so um, tonight you would vote to open the warrant tonight and trying to work, you know, backwards from it um, and also speaking with Adams who will be doing the mailing. If we close the warrant on your regularly scheduled meeting on November 6th, then we have time for whatever legal review and everything else that needs to happen. You can approve it on the 20th and we get it to the printers on the 21st. So tonight you would vote to open the warrant tonight and close it on November 6th. And what's the date in there that it would go get mailed? <clears throat> it would be mailed on either Monday the 27th or Tuesday the 28th, which is plenty of time. So it is plenty of time. You are correct. I looked at the schedule that we had for the summer mm -hmm. and the schedule for the summer in for the June meeting also had plenty of time the problem is we didn't stick to the schedule we right didn't. we didn't right so like that yeah and that, that was a snafu with the annual report if I remember correctly so I could be wrong I, can't remember. I, I honestly don't remember because I think the warrant was ready so I'm not real worried about this one because it's a special town meeting, and I mean, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> um, but but w one, one of the smaller but still actual things that, that affected the level of frustration of the residents in that June meeting, mm -hmm. it was a small thing, but it was real, was the fact that they all felt that they didn't have, that, that, that the warrant didn't get to them in the mail till like two days after the town meeting. For right a lot, yeah. for a lot of people yeah. and a lot of people came in there already on edge that they didn't have what they're used to having and all that and so that's just something that i would really like to avoid that uh, the schedule is a good schedule the schedule is a good schedule but we really really especially that part about getting it to the printer and getting it in the mail when it when the schedule says knows, I, I talked to ken monday friday or monday he said, if you get it to me the, the 21st. 21st or 22nd, he can be in his car bringing it around the 28th. And we know that it's Thanksgiving break that week, too. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's why All right. Adam spoke with him to make sure that that was Yeah, I, I cleared work. it. <laughs> All right. So I, I'm okay with the schedule, but this time we're going to be enforcing the schedule. <laughs> There's a rigid, rigid adherence to the schedule. All right, so you will vote then to open it tonight and close it on November 6th? Yes. Yes, and, and to send out an email tomorrow to all departments saying, it's open now, it closes soon. Oh, I, they already okay. knew that they were supposed to have it to me by the 16th, but I can let them know it's yeah. open until November 6th. Sounded like a motion, which I will second. <laughs> Very good. Um, aye. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> aye. 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 Thank you. All. Wonderful. Um, so, uh, what else? The the unfinished business category. Do we have anything to add to all that? Do we have anything to talk about? Anything new on uh, town compensation? We did go to the meeting. Chris and I were at the meeting with the Western Mass. What do you call her? What's her title? Oh yeah, Veronique was there too. You were there too. Oh, was at, that, at Deerfield oh, yeah. Brewery. Right. Oh, Ann Gobi. Ann Our Gobi. rural affairs director. Yes. Rural yes. affairs director yes. with no budget. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, nice, let smart, smart lady. Nice person, no budget. Um, 
yeah, yeah, and um, we 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 did talk a lot about uh, you know how how you know she stood up she stood up and gave all these suggestions. Oh, you know, oh, we're gonna Western. There's gonna be companies that are gonna start to relocate in Western Mass because if the cost of living is so much lower than in Boston. And we're, we're like 100% uh, septic, 100% well. Uh, yeah. Nobody's relocating to us, right. you know. And, she'll, and then she's like, "Oh, there's all these grant opportunities." And you say, "I'm sorry, the grant formulas that the state uses to determine Conway's eligibility equates our residential wealth with that of Wellesley and Belmont. Right. We're in the wealthiest tiers of community because we have six taxpayers that make enough that they skew all of our results so much higher. The rest of us poor slops get dragged into all that." And we get nothing. Um, and we and, did specifically state that to her. Yes, yes. Saying that the formula needs to change. Yes. Um, <laughs> and and so you know the the uh, uh, you know and I guess what I'm trying to get to is that there <laughs> unless we get a special act of legisl of the legislation to to uh, get us money from the storm, we're we're going to have to borrow it all. And um, it's going to be ugly. Mm -hmm. You know, the first year or two, we might get lucky and only have to pay interest, but we're going to be bequeathing this, be bequeathing this hideous debt for roads um, to the residents of this town for years. And um, it, it's so unfair. It's just so unfair. And if another storm like that hits, right. then what? Then yeah, close all the roads. Yeah. Close all the roads. Everybody needs to get by horse and buggies. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And the other thing about that, we had a meeting with the uh, en road engineers. This is also goes into this category. The, the road engineers from FERCOG. Veronique and I, and they came out with their title. There too. Yeah, and these are all yeah. the meetings I forgot to mention. Me too. See, see. <laughs> um, and and um, they came out. We we spent time on Pine Hill and Upper Baptist Hill Road. Um, they came back out again last Friday to look at stuff. And there is sort of, um, you know, they have some ideas. They're going to be putting it into not necessarily an engineering plan, not really a cocktail napkin back, but back of the envelope kind of a plan, but sort of a cross between that and um, with some ideas and some things that we can do. They will that will be that will involve spending town money to actually do that. One for um, putting a drainage ditch along the whole length of Upper Baptist Hill Road from. Uh, that, that sort of thing. There's other things that we can do as well that would, if it benefits that road. Um, and that includes things on private property, potentially. Um, wouldn't necessarily benefit those poor houses on River Street, but um, it would benefit some residences. And so uh, that's one of those things that we hope that as we get clarity on that we're that we'll be able to take a look at and do stuff with so that's that's the news on that category um, the the other item there's an, another a new business discussion of job duties and performance of town administrator um, yeah can we take this, can, yes, can, can we table that for a week yes, yeah, okay it so, seems like, yeah let's table that for a week this seems like and we've done the enough. performance review. If, if I may, Which, I did bring, because if, if, well, not if, but when you give me a performance evaluation, I feel strongly it should be done as professionally as possible. So when my first one was going to come up in six months, I did a lot of research, and I have about 20 different samples of town administrator evaluations. So I took the liberty of putting a little packet together for you of, it includes my job description, my contract, 
a sample professional evaluation with my job description already filled in and then another sample from another town just to give you an idea of you know, how right. they're normally done. Mm -hmm. So All what right. the normal process would be that the employer, each of you, would fill one of these out and then share them with me then the chair would compile all the results, and then that would be considered the evaluation. So these are, um, this is the one that you're proposing that we use? It's, it's a suggestion. That's the one that I went ahead and filled out and just put in my, um, all the uh, duties that are listed in the job description. But I gave you the other one just in case. I mean, I have 20 or 25 of these, which I'm happy to share with anybody. That, you know, yeah, so I mean, you could decide on what process you want to use. Yeah, the job description is the most important part. Yeah. So there is a paperwork component to it. I'm a big believer in meeting as a group and talking, too. And um, that's, that's what I was like, lost pretty much uh, insist on. Right, so. This, 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 just, Shuffling paper doesn't do it for me. So. No, no, I know, but I, but I, but, I mean, I feel like this is helpful for me. So, are you, so like as far as process goes, what are you proposing that like we fill these out? I mean, individually, and then fill if you want. Well, if so, I'm actually really looking forward to being reviewed. <laughs> um, I don't know if you know that, but in my contract, I was supposed to be at six months, and then every year after that. And because I want to do the best possible job I can for the town, it's very important for me to get feedback. Nobody's perfect. Nobody can do every job outstanding in every category. And I need to know where each of you feels that I need to improve. Or what I'm doing well. Right. <laughs> so, so, then we, so if you each if you individually each, complete these, give them to well, you in advance, right? But you need to actually, I would say, maybe delay it a little longer because I think the board, you should look at these and decide if this is the format you wish to use and right. vote on it and say this is the format, this is the procedure we're going to use to do the evaluation. And then once you've done that, then you could fill them out, each of you. The way it normally works though, so that I have some clue when there's a discussion, is that you would share them with me. Right, you could, yeah. I would get to see what you've written because otherwise it doesn't really help me to to learn what I need to do better. Well, in every performance review that I've had, I've, it's been provided to me in advance before I sit down for the actual review, so I know what. Right. Um, All right. Yeah. So, I mean, but, but this ain't rocket science. I'm no, that's yeah. It. I'm, no, I'm, no. I'm, I'm okay just putting this off one week and just doing it. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's, let's, so, let's so can we just decide? Like, if, if you want to decide to, to use, use that rubric, that's that. Yeah. I, I feel like we should use a form because we had already we had a situation where we did not see reviews and we did not see warnings. Right. And it caused issues that could have been easily prevented. Right. So, I agree with Phil that talking is the best form, but that paperwork is also good for. So issues that might arise. <laughs> can we settle on a re I like this one. It's only two pages. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, that one. That okay. one's it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, All right. small text. It's not like I don't feel like I'm doing like less work. Um, <laughs> so All right. We'll All right. I, I move that that's the one. Okay. So, <laughs> so we'll complete this one individually. We'll provide those to Veronique mm -hmm. before next. The chair or Veronique? Oh, to the chair, right? Well, no, and then I need to see yeah, each of them. The but chair, then yeah. if you want, so the nature of a town administrator's job performance review is public. My position is, but so this doesn't normally happen in a public setting for other positions, but it does for a town administrator. Mm -hmm. So what is then shared in public, what I, what I would ask is that you each fill it out and share it with me and Phil so that Phil can then compile them and then you all agree this is the compilation of what we think. Okay. You know, and then what that compilation is what becomes public. Does that make sense? Yes. So I think I did that. The compilation is what gets put in the minutes and is public. Correct. Any resident still has the right 
to inspect the original. It did, they do. Yeah, and, and, and we've been through this with superintendents. Yeah, and that's um, fine. But yeah, but fine. but gen, but, the, but what we provide with to, out to the public without anybody asking further mm -hmm. is the compilation. Okay. Yeah. So do we? Um, I guess are, are we going to discuss this at our next meeting, or if we just we're going to have the we're just going to have our own individual rubrics completed by the next meeting? That's a good question. Um, and then have a special meeting to do this with, or, or, or I mean, I, it's kind of it's kind of weird, like going through like an hour and a half of business and then talking about like personal stuff with her afterwards. Like, I don't know, it's kind of just feels weird. Like, um, but That's some, up to sometimes the this whole gig feels weird. What can I say? Yeah, um, I'm I'm fine either way. I just need I just need to know when I have to have my homework done. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Why don't we do a special meeting? All right. All right, so have the homework done on, by next Monday. Okay. And and then we'll set a date for a special special date. <laughs> and I so I'm going to be out of I'll be out of town, but I can still I can oh. um, I I'll, I'll join by Zoom, but I just won't be here on that the what's the one that we have the first week and 23rd. No, no, that's, uh, that's no the sixth. I'll be gone. I'll be gone on the sixth. Okay. Um, but I but I'll be um, I can I can join remotely. I just won't be here. And the other thing is that, you know, so the, the next meeting is scheduled for October 23rd. A as we get closer to the special town meeting, we might not be able to adhere to our every other week thing, and yep. we might need a few more yep. meetings. Um, that's my yeah, prediction. That's my, I have all my um, Mondays basically blocked off. Uh, I, would, I would say the 13th would be the one where you probably should pencil in just in case. Okay. November 13th. Uh-oh. Yeah, he's on. Or right. the special meeting? It, just that you might need an extra meeting to make sure that the warrant's all set for okay, got the it. special town meeting. I don't know. It's up to you all when you do the. I don't need anything special. Oh, <laughs> yes, to you do. do. It at a, yes, you at a regular do. meeting. I put in select work for every Monday night, so Good. it's always a all right. pleasant surprise when I'm like, oh, wait, we don't actually have a meeting. <laughs> so did, did everybody read the town administrator update that she sent out? Yes. yes. Do you have anything to add to that or anything you want to highlight for any? Um, well, just that for those watching, I um, we do have the MVP Harvest Meal, the part of the Municipal Vulnerability yes. Program grant that's coming up this Saturday from 11 to 2 on the ball field. Um, the FERCOG and GZA are working hard to get it all together. There's going to be a tent, there's going to be food, there's going to be a stream table, there's going to be pumpkin carving. Um, and the whole point of these educational activities that we're doing, there's going to be two more. Um, there will be in November, um, Nicholas Miller, who is a fluvial geomorphologist, is going to give a river walk and talk, which I think will be really neat. I can't wait to do that. And then also, he will be giving a talk at the Historical Society in January. And all of these are to give people several things. One, to explain the grant that we just received from the state to help us mitigate flooding in the center of Conway. What what are they actually doing? If people see a gentleman out there around Pumpkin Hollow Brook or the South River, that's probably Nick doing some of his data collection for this. To explain some of the work that's been done over the last 10 years, for instance, the work that was done down at South River Meadow um, and why that was done and how it ties into all the flood mitigation. And then also um, for residents to be able to ask any questions they have about the process. And Charming will be there. Yes. <laughs> and anyway, that was the only thing I really wanted to highlight was that coming up. That oh, and just to let, well, you know, you've got the rest of that. The Riverwalk guidebook that Nick will be using. I wrote that mm -hmm. like 12 years ago now. It's um, wonderful. It, it, it is. It is. Thank you. Um, that but the that the townwide party they the with catered food on this Saturday eleven to two. Um, I did put I did put a posting in on next door for that. Oops. In the Conway section, just in Conway. And as of today they've got there was five hundred and ninety individual views and like there was eighteen comments. That's a lot for all that. And it's just Conway. 
So um, I think we're going to get a good turnout, even though the weather's supposed to be crappy. Is it really? Like, it's rain. supposed to rain, but rain. there will be a tent. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but um, we did see the menu, and I'm kind of excited about this. It's going to be good food. So. It's going to be good food, yeah. yeah like yes. Greenfield, Greenfield, Corn, um, Greenfield Co-op. I'm not sure if I needed to add that I, I wrote up that uh, bylaw proposal for the shade tree. Oh, oh. Um, that I would like added to the town warrant. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, got, we got to vote on it then. Yeah. Put it on the agenda for Monday. And having um, town council review it? Did you want to? Yes, yes. Check with her on that? Okay. Yes. That's probably good to do before we vote it. So, you, I mean, you can just email that to her attention um, first. Okay. I, mm -hmm. I sent it to Walter and Ron. Yeah, you sent it to me ages ago. I yeah. have it somewhere in there. So if you could just send that to Donna. Okay, yeah. Um, the, the other thing, the other messed up thing is from FERCOG, our, our accounting software agreement, the accounting license, the owner of that software is doing away with those arrangements with town government, which w means increasing our costs by mm, 20000 a year. Uh, no. For 17, however, 17. I have to tell you that um, I missed it. Well, that was at the end of my, I didn't. It was the last thing on my TA update. Um, they had a meeting on Monday with the affected towns. So I'll be checking in with Bob Dean about that at FERCOG, about what exactly this means. But I also got an email from the company itself, from a gentleman there, who said that a lot of the costs for us would be less, the, you know, because. So, but I haven't called it yet. So I'll have more for you on that next week, an update on that. But it's. It's really concerning because it's a lot of money that we would end up having to pay even more um, to the FERCOG for and you know to this company and you know so we're we're definitely looking for solutions. We've and seen this again and again. We saw this with the with Jam Warner software. We're see, we saw this with the Assessor software. These companies get get your get their hooks in with with your, they get you to use start use this software four or five years down the road. Mm -hmm. They, but I just, think they change their business yeah. practices. I think with yeah, this it's one, it had services. been <laughs> right, exactly. It's exactly yeah. right. But I think in this case, I don't believe they have upped the prices in a, a very long time, um, and that's probably part of the problem. <laughs> well, the, the, so. the, I mean, the letter is talking about now adding a new annual fee to purchase your own on-site right. license for ten thousand a year, uh, a one-time implementation training fee of eight thousand dollars. Uh, annual software cloud hosting fee of almost four thousand dollars. None of these fees are currently assessed to us. Right. right. So, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Trust me when I say that the people who the towns that are affected, uh, the town administrators are talking to each yeah. other. <laughs> the name of the company is MIP Software. Thank you, MIP Software. Nice people you are. Um, all right. Next uh, next meeting is October twenty third. That is that is this Monday coming up. Mm -hmm. um, before that, we do have a meeting. It, it's not on the necessarily posted, but we're all possibly going to be there Saturday eleven to two. Yeah. Um, but we'll just be eating. That's right. That won't be enough. unless unless anybody brings beer or tequila, then we'll be drinking as well. Yes. <laughs> then why not? Um, <laughs> I have a huge thing of tequila I did not use at the wedding. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Put that on I'll next I'll door. bring lime. I'll bring some limes. I wasn't going to go, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so thank you, everybody. Um, with that, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Stand adjourned. Thank you.